Good morning and welcome to the 13th Sunday after Trinity. Uh, this is the morning prayer office. And like last time, there'll be uh, one small change and that is we will be doing the, what we call the propers, meaning the collect, the epistle and gospel will be from the 13th Sunday after Trinity that we would be doing during the Holy Eucharist service rather than a morning prayer. That means that on page 207, is where you'll find the Collect Epistle and Gospel for this Sunday, for this service. And uh, number two, the psalm this morning will be Psalm 104. That is found on page 467. We'll read that together when the time comes. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. <clears throat> Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is the Lord our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Again, the psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 104, beginning on page 467. Praise the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, thou art become exceeding glorious, thou art clothed with majesty and honor, thou deckest thyself with light, as it were, with a garment, and spreadest out the heavens like a curtain, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters and maketh the clouds his chariot, and walketh upon the wings of the wind. He maketh his angels winds, and his ministers a flaming fire. 
He laid the foundations of the earth that it never should move at any time. He covers it with the deep, like as with a garment. The waters stand above the hills. At thy rebuke they flee. At the voice of thy thunder they haste away. They go up as high as the hills and down to the valleys beneath, even unto the place which thou hast appointed for them. Thou hast set them their bounds, which they shall not pass, neither turn again to cover the earth. He sendeth the springs into the rivers, which run among the hills. All beasts of the field drink thereof, and the wild asses quench their thirst. Beside them shall the fowls of the air have their habitation, and sing among the branches. He watereth the hills from above. The earth is filled with the fruit of thy works. He bringeth forth grass for the cattle, and green herb for the service of men, that he may bring food out of the earth, and wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil to make him a cheerful countenance, and bread to strengthen man's heart. The trees of the Lord are also full of sap, even the cedars of Lebanon, which he hath planted, wherein the birds make their nests, and the fir trees are dwelling for the stork. The high hills are a refuge for the wild goats, and so are the stony rocks for the conies. He appointed the moon for certain seasons, and the sun knoweth his going down. He maketh darkness that it may be night, wherein all the beasts of the forest do move. The lions roaring after their prey do seek their meat from God. The sun ariseth, and they get them away together, and lay them down in their dens. Man goeth forth to his work and to his labor until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are thy works! In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. So is the great and wide sea also, wherein are things creeping innumerable, both small and great beasts. There go the ships, and there is that Leviathan, whom thou hast made to take his pastime therein. These wait all upon thee, that thou mayest give them meat in due season. When thou givest it them, they gather it, and when thou openest thy hand, they are filled with good. When thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. When thou takest away their breath, they die and are turned again to their dust. When thou lettest thy breath go forth, they shall be made. Thou shalt renew the face of the earth. The glorious majesty of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. The earth shall, trem shall tremble at the look of him. If he do but touch the hills, they shall smoke. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. So shall my words please him. My joy shall be in the Lord. As for sinners, they shall be consumed out of the earth, and the ungodly shall come to an end. Praise thou the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The epistles written in the third chapter of the epistle of St. Paul to the Galatians, beginning at the 16th verse. To Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. In this I say, that the covenant which was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. But God gave to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if then there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Here endeth the epistle. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 
holy, holy, Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The Father of an infinite majesty, thine adorable, true and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee and we worship thy name ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. The Holy Gospel is written in the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the 23rd verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see, for I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him, and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came wherein he, where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him, and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus, said Jesus unto him, Go, and do thou likewise. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We return this week to a discussion of the law of God. But let us first recall the gospel. The gospel, again, is the good news. It is the news that is given to us. It is a message that comes from outside of us. And, it's, and as it enters the ears and by the grace of the Holy Spirit, it produces faith in us. And faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word or command of Christ. Faith, then, is a product of the gospel. It is worked out or demonstrated, then, in a life of good works as its fruit. Or as our prayer says today, in part, True and laudable service. We do true and laudable service. Faithfully serving God in this life, that we fail not finally to attain everlasting life through the merits of Jesus Christ our Lord. So even the attaining of everlasting life, along with the serving God that we do in this life, is always through the merits of Jesus Christ. It is always the merit of Christ that we are to rely on, not our own. 
Last week, recall, we heard, or we learned that Moses was given the law written on tablets of stone. And this came just in time, as you might also recall, that since while Moses was gone up into the mountain to receive the law from God, the people were down below, led by Aaron, down at the bottom of the mountain, making a golden calf uh, to give themselves something tangible to worship. So the law was given in this timely fashion precisely because of transgressions. There they are. Had the tablets been observed by Aaron and the people soon enough while the golden calf was still cooling off, uh, they would have noticed how they had violated God's commandments already. They were trying to make an image of Yahweh. So we might let them off of commandment one, perhaps, maybe, having no other God before the true God. But they made a graven image. So the second commandment was violated. So the law was given to wake them up. Paul says the law was added because of transgressions. They certainly were transgressors, as we can clearly see. But the Spirit puts the law on our hearts now. We are new creatures with new desires. We rehearse the Ten Commandments um, on the first Sunday of every month because though we are regenerated by the Holy Spirit and we now live by faith, the law still has its place to guide us and to direct us as well as to remind us of our failings. And we should think as each command is read to us uh, by the deacon and, re and reply that we desire God to have mercy upon us and to incline our hearts to keep that law, how have we violated that one this day or this past week? And to desire to receive grace to improve as well as insurance that are failing to obey and our certain repeated violations, that Christ has covered our sins, obeying in our place, and he has clothed us with his righteousness. Today in our epistle lesson, we go back a bit further. Recall this time to Abraham. He is called by God out of the region called Ur of the Chaldeans. And this is about 430 years before Moses and the Ten Commandments and the law come along. And this in many ways was a more primitive and simpler form of religion. God called on Abraham to believe him, to trust in him, and, and, and God would then make Abraham's offspring, if he did, as numerous as the stars of the heavens and the sand of the sea. And this is why we are now called children of Abraham and not children of Moses or children of Israel. To, Ab to Abraham was the promise made. God came to Abraham. He made a promise. He made a covenant to make him have this vast uh, amount of offspring. Everyone who believes now in Christ becomes a child of Abraham or is a child of Abraham, newly reborn. But we should hear what Paul is telling us today. Now, he says the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does not say, and to offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one, and to your offspring, who is Christ. God promised Abraham that his offspring would be, as num would be numerous, as we heard, as the stars in the heavens or the sand on the seashore. But Paul's also noting that it can be understood, and it should be understood ultimately, as referring to Christ. <clears throat> Christ, as head of us all, is the offspring of Abraham, a child of Abraham who is now the only one by whom we are saved. But Paul then says, the law, which came 430 years afterward, does not annul a covenant previously ratified by God so as to make the promise void. For if the inheritance comes by the law, it no longer comes by promise, but God gave it to Abraham by a promise. So even though 430 years after Abraham lived, Moses comes along, he receives the law, the Ten Commandments, and, and later all the other ceremonial things that go along with it. Even though the law was given as, some, as something to obey, the original promise that God made to Abraham still applies, still stands. The promise of salvation is by believing as Abraham did and by having faith as Abraham did and by trusting in God alone as Abraham did. Salvation is still by faith. Being in the covenant with God in, by, in Christ by the Spirit is still by faith. 
So Paul asks the question, anyone who would reading this letter or hearing this letter would ask, why then did God give the law? Why not just let people continue to live by faith? And then Paul gives the answer, the law was given because of transgressions. We know that, we, and we know what those are. We saw it transpiring there as Moses comes down from the mountain with the commandments of God. The people, again, led by Aaron, they're transgressing the laws of God. They're not living by faith. And that was just the beginning. They were fashioning false idols to represent God. Luther has a quote on this. He says, Why then was the law added? Indeed, it was delivered so many years after to the posterity of Abraham that there might be in the world a certain people, people who might have the word and testimony of Christ, out of which Christ also, according to the flesh, might be born, and that men being kept and shut up under the law might sigh and groan for their deliverance through the seed of Abraham, which is Christ. Moreover, he says, the ceremonies commanded in the law did foreshadow Christ. Wherefore, the promise was not abolished either by the law, or the ceremonies of the law, but rather confirmed until the preaching of the gospel might be spread among all nations. Unquote. So he's saying the law came along later so the people might be, held, might be held captive by the law, knowing that they should obey it, and yet they don't, that we might sigh and groan, as he says, or become discouraged because we don't obey it fully, and then that we might look for deliverance and and, do, and that, was, that is through Christ. He says there also that even the other ceremonies, not just the Ten Commandments, were pointers to the coming Christ. Christ was shown to the people in, in the blood and the sacrifices and the sacrificial lamb and the altar and the showbread and the, and, the, and the laver of water and all the other ceremonies. So be it commandments or ceremonies, they are all pointers to Christ and, and leaders to Christ. And that promise that God made to Abraham is still to this very day in place and open for us. So is the law then contrary to the promises of God, Paul asks? Is the law contrary to the promises of God? No. He says if a law had been given that could give life, then righteousness would indeed have been by the law. But scripture has imprisoned everything under sin so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. So he's saying if there, was a, if there was a law given that could be obeyed or we had the power to obey, then we would be righteous because we obeyed it. Righteousness would be then by the law, but it isn't. Righteousness is by faith in Christ, the seed of Abraham. Imagine if all of this were not here. Imagine we're starting from scratch. Imagine if we were given a tablet suddenly that, that had a, a, a number of laws written on it and we were told, now if you want to be considered righteous, and even more importantly, if you want to have eternal life, then just obey these and you will live. How far would we get before violating even one of them? Couple that with the comments by Jesus who said, if you don't, you don't have to go and physically kill someone to break the sixth commandment, that you shall not, they should, shall do no murder. You just have to have hatred for him in your heart. You don't have to physically commit adultery with your neighbor's wife. He says, you just have to look at her with thoughts of adultery or lust in your heart. So now think about how far now you might get in the day or the next few minutes or the next few seconds before you violate one of them yourself. And remember, James tells us that if you break one, you're guilty of breaking the law in general. You might not break all of them, but you're still a lawbreaker and it's all over. But fortunately, it does not work uh, like that for us. The law is still in place, and we are still obligated to keep it. But when we fail to, to do so, we are covered by the blood of Christ. And again, this is not to say that we can just forget the law because we have Christ. Because in many, many places, Paul writes to us uh, the contrary. He says in, in Romans chapter 2, God will render to each one according to his works. To those who by patience and in well-doing, seek for glory and honor and immortality. So there's a seeking and a striving there. Glory, honor, immortality. He will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but they obey unrighteousness, there will be wrath and fury. He says that when we were baptized, we were buried with Christ by baptism into death 
in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Or he says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members as sin to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. And your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. This is what Jesus tries to convey to the man this morning in the gospel. And this is certainly for us as well. The man is a lawyer, meaning he's an expert in the law of God in all parts. And he says to Jesus, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says, well, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answers, well, he says, it, shall, it says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. So the answer is perfect. The summary of the law. He summarizes the Ten Commandments in one word. Love God and love neighbor. He knows that life meant more than a good life and in, in the land, but eternal life. And he also knew further that a neighbor is immediately the Jew, since he's Jewish, but it also expanded to mean Gentile as well. He says to him, you've, Jesus says, you've answered correctly. Do this and you'll live. But this doesn't satisfy the man. He wants to justify himself. He says, well, I want eternal life. I want to know who is my neighbor. So Jesus gives the parable of the Good Samaritan. The one who is good and does good to his neighbor is the one who does not look at race or color or creed or if this is even an enemy or not. And these two men probably are in this parable. He sees the injured man as a fellow man made in the image of God, having just as much value to God as himself, and he helps him. It's that simple. Jesus asks at the end of that parable, well, which of these three do you think provided or proved to be neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers. And he says, well, the one who showed him mercy, of course. And Jesus says, basically, that's exactly right. You understood it. Go and do likewise. Go live that same way yourself. And this is how, of course, we are to live today. Not looking for how we can help when it's convenient. Not looking to see if it's, if, if it's someone we know first. Not looking to see if we can get a reward or someone to notice us, get some greater notoriety. We do these things because we are imperfect lawbreakers who cannot save ourselves, who are also in need. While we were enemies of God, Christ died for us. We could say that we too are the one on the road and Christ is the perfect good Samaritan who has come to bind up our wounds, carried us to safety and has paid all of our bills even. Our debt to God is infinite. So it is good that an infinitely righteous Savior has done all of this for us. So if that is the gift and the law has broken us, then we too can only go and do likewise to our neighbor as well. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. To perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant. To perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, 
world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O God, make clean our hearts within us and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty and merciful God, who, of whose only gift it cometh, that thy faithful people do unto thee true and laudable service, grant we beseech thee that we may so faithfully serve thee in this life that we fail, fail not finally to attain thy heavenly promises through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend this nation to thy merciful care, that being guided by thy providence, we may dwell secure in thy peace. Grant to the President of the United States and to all in authority wisdom and strength to know and to do thy will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people in thy fear. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and other clergy and upon the congregations committed to their charge, the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of men, that thou wouldest be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially we pray for thy holy church universal, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth, and hold the faith and unity of spirit in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are anyways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate, that it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings, and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we then unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory, and we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom of thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Most gracious God, we humbly beseech thee, as for the people of these United States in general, so especially for their Senate and representatives in Congress assembled, that thou wouldest be pleased to direct and prosper all their consultations to the advancement of thy glory, the good of thy church, the safety, honor, and welfare of thy people, 
that all things may be so ordered and settled by their endeavors upon the best and surest foundations, that peace and happiness, truth and justice, religion and piety may be established among us for all generations. These and all other necessaries for them, for us, and thy whole church, we humbly beg in the name and mediation of Jesus Christ, our most blessed Lord and Savior. Amen. O God, the fountain of wisdom, whose statutes are good and gracious and whose law is truth, we beseech thee so to guide and bless the legislature of this state, that it may ordain for our governance only such things as, as please thee, to the glory of thy name and the welfare of thy people. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who sittest in the throne judging right, we humbly beseech thee to bless the courts of justice and the magistrates in all this land, and give unto them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, that they may discern the truth and impartially administer the law in the fear of thee alone, through him who shall come to be our judge, thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogancy, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people the multitudes brought hither out of, out of many kindreds and tongues. Endue with the spirit of wisdom those whom in thy name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through the obedience to thy law we may show forth thy praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and, then, and in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in thee to fail, all which we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord God of hosts, stretch forth, we pray thee, thine almighty arm to strengthen and protect the soldiers of our country. Support them in the day of battle, and in the time of peace, keep them safe from all evil, and do them with courage and loyalty. Grant that in all things they may serve without reproach, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we beseech thee with thy gracious favor to behold our universities, colleges, and schools, that knowledge may be increased among us, and all good learning flourish and abound. Bless all who teach and all who learn, and grant that in humility of heart they may ever look unto thee, who art the fountain of all wisdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who hast committed to thy holy church the care and nurture of thy children, enlighten with thy wisdom those who teach and those who learn, that rejoicing in the knowledge of thy truth, they may worship thee and serve thee from generation to generation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant the requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>